Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting maple leaf drip and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Merlot. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, chrome orange, fire red, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, Fallow Green, Mars Black, and Deep Yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and I have three brushes today. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number seven round brush, and I have a number one round brush, and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And again, you can switch those up a little bit if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I do have a couple of additional resources for you. Uh, one of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same paint and brushes and all that good stuff. Um, so that's there for you. And what's also there is a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're doing an outline of our leaf and we're gonna be using our pencil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple of dots um, that are gonna be connected by the internal vein of the, um, of the leaf and then we will make the edges around the outline. So I'm gonna be um, attempting to kind of give you an interpretation of, an, of a maple leaf. So on a maple leaf, they have almost like five sections or five points to it. So that's what I'm gonna be using in my head. So I'm gonna give you a couple of dots to make and then we'll just connect the dots and make an outline and it'll look like a leaf when we're done. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually be making six dots cause one of them's gonna be where the main stem comes out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down my, I'm gonna kind of visually figure out where the center of my canvas is and I'm gonna come down about three inches and then maybe an inch over to the left and make myself a dot. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down maybe about another inch and then I'll split the difference of um, from here to here and put another one maybe right about here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down, if, if this was about halfway down my canvas, I'm a little bit shy of that. So I'm about maybe a third or a little bit more than a third of the way down my canvas and over about an inch and a half. I'm gonna make myself another dot then what I'm gonna do is, if this is my halfway point, I'm gonna come down to, and if this is my quarter way point, I'm gonna come down to about a third. I'm gonna come in my canvas, and, I, oops, I just, I guess I had wet paint on my fingernail. All right, so I'm gonna come in maybe a little bit to the left of this one, and down about this height, make myself another one. And then I have another one over here. So if this is about halfway in my canvas, I'm gonna go a little bit lower than this one and over maybe about an inch and a half to two inches and make myself another one. And then I have one more up and through here. So this one I have a little bit higher than this one. So if you come all the way over and go up a little bit and it's a little bit outside of this one. So somewhere in that vicinity. And these just give you a good um, place to start. I don't know how I got paint on there, but that's all right. We'll ignore the little paint spot over here. Um, so this just gives you a general vicinity of where to start. Um, you could certainly have yours at a little bit different of an angle, but what I'm gonna do, my stem is gonna be coming out from here, but we'll put the stem on later, the main stem, because we're gonna be painting our background. But that, this area right here is where the stem is gonna hit. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this one to this one. And I don't want a super straight line. I want this leaf to look like it has a little bit of movement in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of dip it like that and then give it a little bit of a curve, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is all the other points are going to be connected for, from this dot here. And I'm not really going to be terribly concerned if they're um, in exactly the same movement as that, but I definitely don't want to have them super straight lines. So I've got that one. Now I've got maybe this one. Then maybe I've got this one. And then maybe I've got, oops, missed my mark on that one, but that's okay, that one. So that's gonna be, in essence, kind of the main veins of the leaf. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be making the outside kind of um, shape to it. So my biggest point is gonna be this one. So if you think of all of these as five points, they, in essence, each have um, like little, almost like spikes off of them. So I'm gonna do something like this. I got a little spike in through there and connect it. Then maybe this one I've got coming down here and as it travels up to this one, maybe I've got a couple of little spikes coming off that one. And you can have as many little spikes as you want or as few as you want. It's really kind of a visual preference. And I'm gonna kind of maybe scoop this one in through here, maybe something like that. I've got this one down here. Maybe this one I've only got I don't know, maybe like one little spike and then it meets that one. And maybe this one's got one here, one here. Maybe it just comes up in through here. Maybe this one only has one. So you can see I'm just kind of free forming. It doesn't have to be equal on both sides. Uh, maybe this one has a little bit more bend to it, something like that. Maybe it's got a spike in through here. And then I'm just kind of kind of connect each point at some point <laughs> with um, with the one next to it. Maybe this one now comes. Maybe this one's got a couple of little points on it. And the more um, kind of carefree and not systematic you have it, the more natural it's going to look. And that's going to conclude my outline for the leaf. I'm going to switch brushes to my large brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the first layer of our water. We're gonna be using our large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using black and green paint. I'm gonna start a little bit below this point, so maybe somewhere around here. I'm gonna be going left to right. I started with just black on my brush. Now I'm picking up um, black and green and I'm just going left to right. I don't wash my brush. And now I'm gonna just alternate a little bit of black and a little bit of green so that way we have some light spots and some dark spots to the water itself. You can certainly have this as light or as dark as you want. Just be mindful that the black can very easily take over. So if you don't want it too, too dark, um, then definitely just use a little bit of black. Uh, you can always add more black as you want, but it's really tough to take it off. Um, once it's on there. And then I'm just gonna do a nice smooth stroke left to right so I get all these to blend in nicely. And then we're gonna use the same brush for the next step, but you don't have to wash it or dry it. Just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our sky or the background behind the leaf. I'm using that large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using black, green, and yellow. So I've already got black and green on my brush. So I'm gonna be doing, in essence, a circular motion to color this in. But I know as I get around um, my leaf, I've gotta go s slow and it's not gonna look awesome. It's gonna look streaky. This is just the first layer. We're gonna be doing another layer on this, so don't worry about it looking perfect at this point. And where it meets the water, if you want it to blend in, you can certainly just kind of do a left to right stroke and just get it to kind of um, blend as it goes up. But what I'm gonna be doing, I've got, right now I've got green 
and black on my brush, mostly green, but you can see I'm just kind of rubbing it in so that's making it look a little bit more green. Um, but in a minute, I'm also gonna be using the yellow. I'm going slower around the edges of my leaf just so I don't, um, so I can get it right up to the leaf and I can kind of have a smooth transition into the rest of the background. Um, but again, if you end up with streaks uh, don't worry about it. It's okay. We're going to be doing another layer that's going to get rid of all of those. So what you're more concerned about is just kind of getting a nice even coat. I am going to have mine a little bit lighter when it gets around the actual leaf itself. That's where I'll be using a little bit more of the yellow. But right now I'm just kind of concentrating on the bottom, getting it to transition with this water a little bit. And I'm using primarily a circular type brush stroke, but you could certainly use any kind of brush stroke that you want, that you're comfortable with. Um, and again, it's not terribly important how awesome it comes out in this step, but what I'm imagining this to be is just an out of focus, real deep in the forest. This is all that you know, maybe the evergreens, maybe, you know, it's obviously a little um, interpretive here because we're, we're doing a real close up. I just picked up some yellow. Um, we're doing a really close up image of the, of the leaf. So it's almost like we're, it's um, like hyper close on the leaf itself and everything else is out of focus. So that's why when you're doing this type of painting, these backgrounds, you're really just kind of taking on whatever uh, hues of that particular um, object would be behind it. So if you take a photograph and you look and of, of, of like a close up of a flower or a bug or something like that, you can't really discern the actual objects behind it because they're all out of focus. So that's kind of what I'm doing here is I'm putting the stuff behind the leaf totally out of focus. So I'm just trying to grab some of those real deep, dark, shadowy um, areas in the forest. And again, have fun with going around your leaf. If you bump into some of your spikes on the edge of the leaf, don't worry about it. You can enhance them or modify them later. We've got plenty of other steps that are gonna help you to um, accomplish those type of details, but you just wanna get nice and close up and you can see I'm using kind of a combination of brush strokes so you can have fun um, figuring out what one is going to work best for you, but I'm going a little bit lighter with more of the yellow um, on my brush as I come right around the actual leaf itself, but I never washed my brush. So I've got the remnants of the green and the black on there, um, and that way it really ends up being a nice natural transition from the light into the dark. But again, I want some of it to be dark too, so every I just smushed my brush a little bit into the canvas, which unloaded some of those darker tones onto it. And I'm just kind of creeping along in through these little crevices along the sides of my of my leaf. And now I'm just going to kind of freeform and, you know, be much quicker on the rest of it because I I don't have any little objects that I'm contending with. And we're doing a maple leaf um, because I live in the woods in New England and we have loads and loads and loads and loads of maple <laughs> maple trees but maybe yours ends up looking like an oak leaf or a leaf from a birch tree or um, those are about all the leaves I know oak birch maple who sycamore tree maybe that's for the people out in the west coast of the United States I don't know many, I don't know the name of many trees, <laughs> but this is going to conclude this first layer of my background. I am going to be switching brushes to my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your background on here, you can put this large brush away and take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer on the leaf. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are yellow, orange, red, and brown. So this is intended to look like a autumn leaf. Um, and where I come from, these leaves, as they're changing, they have so, they have 
multiple shades of colors within the leaf. So that's why I'm going to be using lots of different colors. So I'm going to start um, with yellow and I'm going to get some yellow sections in there. And the reason why I'm starting with yellow is because I want the yellow to stay yellow. If I was to try and put yellow on top of red or on top of brown, it's not going to be as vibrant as it is right on top of the, um, on the white. So you may end up um, seeing or not seeing your pencil veins by the time this is, this step is over, but it's okay if, you know, you can't see them 100%. They're just there kind of just to be a guide for you. So I have yellow paint on my brush and I'm not going to be using a ton of paint. Um, I'm really just thinking of this as like a kind of a primer coat for my, for my entire leaf. And I'm just taking it and I'm just kind of rubbing it in there in some various spots. I'm not having, um, firm lines as the edges. Uh, this way I can kind of blend it in with the other colors and I'm just doing it in sporadic spots. You don't have to do it in any one specific um, spot, but I do want a lot of uh, the yellow to be represented, even if it's underneath some of the orange or some of the red later. So that's why I'm using um, the yellow in a lot of areas. And when I get to the other colors, you'll see how I kind of manipulate the other ones I can do on top of the yellow, but I can't do yellow on top of the others. So that's why I'm using a lot of yellow to start. Um, but again, I'm leaving some spots that aren't going to be yellow. Uh, I suppose you could do the whole um, leaf entirely in yellow off the bat. Um, but I'm choosing to do it this way um, and you can if you want follow right along or kind of manipulate it on your own and if you run into some wet green on from your background don't worry just paint it on in because the leaves were originally green anyways so if you have some green in there it's all right so now that I've got most of the um, the leaf represented in yellow. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of brown. I do wanna have a couple of brown spots, um, but I don't want the brown to overtake it. So I'm just gonna do a couple of strategically placed brown spots, maybe one there, and I'm really hardly putting any on my brush. And I don't wash my brush between these colors. Um, this way they end up really just working off of my brush and making everything look like it belongs together. I had a little bit too much paint on my brush there, so I wiped it off on my paper towel. And you can overlap it into these other sections, like I'm overlapping it a little bit into the yellow, again, just to make sure that it looks like it belongs. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of orange without washing my brush, and now I'm gonna start putting orange wherever I want to. So you can get it to, you know, blend in with some of the yellow if you want to. Um, you could have it kind of all sitting all on its own, but I really want my sections to, you know, look like they, they belong together. And again, we're going to do a second layer on this. So if you don't get this blending technique or this overlapping perfect on this initial go around, don't worry. That's why I do two layers because I want to have that opportunity to, um, make any modifications and make it look a little bit more realistic. Uh, so I'm still kind of just in the orange right now. I think I'm going to put a little bit over in through here. I suppose you could put, pick up orange and yellow at the same time if you wanted to. Um, but again, I'm just kind of, I'm not using a lot of paint, just kind of rubbing it on in here so it can, I'm almost kind of dry brushing it. I'm not, you know, I'm not using a lot of paint. I want to be able to manipulate where these colors go. Um, so that's that. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit more orange. I picked up a little bit of brown and orange here. I'm gonna gonna start to go into my um, red in a minute, but I just want to make sure I've got enough of what I want for the yellow to be represented here and putting or the orange and putting some of the orange over the brown in through here. And again, overlap those colors. That's, that's what's going to make this look really nice and natural. And now I think I'm going to go into my red. 
I didn't wash my brush, I just picked up a little bit of red and I'm going to get it to overlap whatever is next to it, make these colors look like they, like they belong together. And again, it might not look totally awesome on this step, so don't worry. Just really try and get yourself some, some sections of colors on this particular step. I think I want a little tiny sliver of it up in through here. And then, let's see, what are we going to do for the next step? We are actually going to be uh, going back to our large brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your first layer of your leaf with as many different colors as you want and maybe maybe you just wanted yours to all be yellow you know there are just yellow leaves there are just red leaves so if you wanted to change yours on the fly or make yours a little bit different than mine that's understandable acceptable you do whatever you want it is your painting and I just got these two little sections in through here and then I am going to be putting my medium brush away and I'm gonna take out my large brush. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Large brush and getting ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm doing the second layer of my water. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use my large brush. I'm gonna use more green this time. I'm still gonna use black and green, but I'm gonna use more green. I want this to be a little bit smoother looking. Right now it's kind of stripey. Um, and by doing the second layer, it's gonna make it look a lot smoother. So I just put green on my brush and I know that uh, this paint is a little see-through, which is why we're doing a second layer. Um, but the, the color is gonna get deeper and richer as it as it dries especially when we do this nice second layer so I can put the green on top of the black from the first layer or I can put the black on top of the green and it really just starts to work together and look really really nice so that's why I love doing two layers um, I do know that it will change a little bit as it dries so it just you know adds to the mystique of it when you're doing layers like this. Um, and then we are gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your second layer of your water on here, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the second layer on the upper background. So again, this could be your sky or your out of focus forest. Um, I'm gonna be using my large brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are the same as the first time, which would be black, green, and yellow. And I'm also gonna use white this time too. So I want this to have a softer, more out of focus look. The white is gonna make it so it's not so translucent or so see-through and it's gonna make it look really nice and soft. I'm gonna make sure that I have a nice transition from my water up into here so it almost, the, the line almost disappears. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. And then I think I'm gonna darken this top left-hand corner and top right-hand corner a little bit too. Um, so I'm gonna start, oh, just a little friendly reminder, not a reminder, a little a friendly note. <laughs> Before you start this step, you do wanna make sure that your background is dry. Um, and the reason being because you're gonna end up kind of scrubbing and adding another layer of wet paint on here. And if your paint is still wet underneath, what could happen is you could lift that paint right off of the canvas. So if that does happen, just stop painting and dry it. But what I would recommend before you start the step is have it dry. So if it didn't dry on its own, you could either you know just take a little bit longer of a break or you could blow on it, which might take you all day, or you could just take out a blow dryer and blow dry it. So whatever you gotta do to get that background dry, just I recommend it. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black and green on my brush, and I'm gonna start with that same kind of brush stroke, the, the circular brush stroke, and you can see already how it really is making it more of a solid kind of color. I'm using a little bit more black, 
at the bottom just so I can get these colors to blend in a little bit. They don't have to blend 100%. You don't need to make this, transi this transition seamless, um, but if you can get some kind of um, gradient from dark up to light, that'll make it look pretty cool in my opinion. <laughs> and then as I'm moving toward upwards, I'm going to be using more of the yellow. If you use um, less of the green and more of the yellow with the black, it's going to give it more of a brownish look. Um, if you use more of the green, that's going to give it more of like a, um, almost like a bluish green kind of look. So wherever your visual preference is, just go with it. You know, you don't have to have yours exactly the same tone or shade of green that I have mine. Um, I am just playing with the with the intensities of the yellow and the green as I go. So the first the first time I did it, I used more of the green with the black. This time, I think I'm going to use a little bit more of the yellow with the black. So it gives it these. Um, this depth in the layers because now I've got two different greens that are kind of sitting on top of each other. So it really kind of um, adds to that that dimensional aspect of it. And I'm just kind of using my circular motion. I'm not using white yet and I probably am not going to use white until I've got the majority of this second layer on um, because I know the second I put white on my brush, it's going to, I don't want to say muddy it, but it will definitely add a bunch of softness. Um, and I, right now I, I want to concentrate more on getting a full color coat on here. Um, and then when I've got that where I'm satisfied with it, that's when I'll start adding a little bit of the white. And you'll see how that helps to helps to soften it a bit as well. And again, I'm going nice and slow around my um, around my leaf itself. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of the green with a little black. And I'm just kind of alternating colors at this point. I'm using both the green and the yellow. Um, I did have a lot of the black on my brush initially so that's kind of just working its way off of my brush at this time. I want this corner to be a little bit darker up there too but let me work on this as it just caught my eye as I was looking up here. So I'm going to add a little bit of the black, green, and yellow on my brush up in this little corner up here just so I can get that to transition almost like Maybe there's a little glow behind our beautiful leaf here, but you can imagine yours to be whatever way you want it. I just, I tend to let my brush and my brain do, do as they want to, as they're visually um, watching the painting kind of morph into whatever it's going to morph into. Um, yeah, I like that color there. So I like deep, rich colors. Um, and when I'm looking at a, a painting that has natural, like forest elements, I really like these colors to be rich and deep and make sure that they are really well represented. And again, this is, you know, meant to look like it's out of focus. So if you have light spots and dark spots, you know, that's, that's totally fine. And again, I'm just kind of working with both the green, yellow, and the black um, in a minute. Once I do have uh, all of this second layer on, I'm going to start adding a little bit of white. Uh, but I'm getting this a little bit darker in through here. I think it was my, my leaf wasn't popping out enough, so I'm making it a little bit darker with the darker green. Um, and now, let's see, I've got a good second coat. So now I'm going to just teeny tiny teeny tiny bit of um, white maybe a little green on my brush and now I can start just kind of adding almost like these pops of you know softness throughout it so you might want a lot of this softness throughout yours I'm not pressing my brush hard um, I'm really just almost lightly working it into some of the wet paint that was already on there. Um, but you could, you know, if you wanted 
that bit of a glow or something around the uh, the leaf. You could use a little bit of that white just to help that story. Or if your paint was looking a little streaky, like you weren't able to get a nice softness to it, white is going to help to um, create that that nice almost like a velvety kind of texture to it. So play around with it. You keep tweaking it as much as you want to. And we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this beautiful second layer of your out of focus forest on here, you can put your large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our veins in our leaf. I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm just using brown paint. So I want, we're gonna actually be doing two layers. Um, this is just gonna be the first layer. This is gonna to help to give us kind of a, a roadmap as we're, um, as we're putting on the other details to the leaf. So I've got my brown paint. I have my pencil marks. If you can't see your pencil marks, you can just kind of make this up on the fly, but that's where I'm gonna start. I'm just really painting on top of my pencil marks to start. I do not want a perfect line because I want it to look very natural and mother nature does not do perfect lines. <laughs> she is, she very, maybe she, she's gotta be a female cause she's called mother nature. Um, so when you start running out of paint on your brush just go for it when you when you have broken lines just just let it happen embrace the unpredictability of this type of step because you want that to look really nice and natural so i've got kind of my initial markings now i'm going to put additional veins so they come off of these ones so i'm going to just kind of make this like this. Think of it almost like um, like tree branches. So you've got your your thicker ones in the middle and then you've got your your smaller ones that come off of that main that main branch. So you can have a lot, you can have a few, what however many you want to have. You could have you know, one that branches off and then another one that branches off from that one. So feel free to, you know, kind of make this into whatever vein system you would like. <laughs> you can have, you know, even a rogue one that comes off of, you know, this center area. Just have some fun with it. And then once we're done with this step, we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So I think, I think that's looking pretty good for me. So I'm going to put my small brush away in my, in my cup and take out my medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm painting my leaf stem. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with some black and brown and to put it into shape and then I will add some yellow and white as a nice highlight. So I'm putting black and brown on my medium brush. I, this is where it's gonna start and this is where it's gonna end and it's gonna be wider up here than it is down here. So again, you don't want it super duper straight so I'm gonna give it some kind of movement. So if I'm gonna start in through here, maybe I go up a little bit and you know, have fun with it. If that's gonna be my starting point. I'm gonna make it wider, probably, you know, I don't know, a quarter of an inch to half of an inch wide up at the top. And then you wanna make it more narrow as it gets down to this, um, to where it meets the, the actual leaf. And I'm not gonna just have that piece to the stem. I'm also gonna have a little 
branchy piece coming off. So I'm gonna have this coming off maybe about midway in through there and it's gonna come and wrap and kind of drip down or lean down somewhere over here. So again, it's a branch. It doesn't have to be anything really super duper perfect. So maybe I've got something like that and then maybe I've got a little broken piece that comes off in through there. So again, just have fun with whatever kind of shape and movement your your hand and your brush makes you do. Um, and then now that I've got that into the shape that I want, I don't wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and white and I'm gonna start kind of streaking in little highlights. So I, I want my highlight to predominantly be top um, right of my branch itself or my stem itself so and it can come into the main area of the leaf that's going to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional and it doesn't just have to be one solid line you can certainly make it have a couple of like little lumps and bumps on it because that's what's going to happen in nature um, and if you find yours is too yellow or too white, you can certainly pick up some of the brown with it. I'm gonna have little streaks up in through here. And again, just have fun with it. It doesn't have to be any one specific way. This is, you know, a highlight on a little branch. And once you've, you know, added as much light and as much dimension as you want, then you're all done. We are going to be using uh, this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your stem on here, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing our second layer on the leaf, the color of the leaf. I'm going to use my medium brush and I'm in essence going to do the same thing I did the first time, only this time I'm using white also. So I'm going to be using brown, red, orange, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna actually start with my yellow and white, adding little highlights around the edges of the leaf. And then I'm just gonna kind of make my way in towards the center and kind of like we did the background, how we just did another um, similar layer on top. That's what we're gonna do this time as well. And if you bump into your little veins, just let it happen. You're still gonna be able to see those veins anyways. And we have a second final layer on the veins that we're gonna be doing later too. So bump into them all you want. So here we go. I'm gonna start with yellow and white on my brush. And for me, I'm thinking a lot that the little tips are gonna be my lightest area. So I have yellow and white on my brush and I'm really, I want a little bit more white here. I'm really using, utilizing this to clean up the edges and make those little points really nice and bright so it adds some dimension to it. And then I am going to just make that layer look smooth. So I'm adding another layer on top of what I already did. So if I want an area to pop out and look more three-dimensional, I'll add a little bit more white to that area. And you can see just that little bit of white in through there made that pop out a lot. And I just put a little bit more yellow on my brush to blend it into the colors that are living next to it. Maybe along this edge here, maybe I add a little bit of orange. You could either work from one area and then just work your way around the, um, the painting or you could work one color at a time. So if you wanted to do all your yellows and whites and get all those little highlights in there, then just stick with yellow and white on your brush for a little while and get all these bright little points, but make sure that they kind of um, blend in with the neighboring color. And this is also a great time where if you painted over any of your little edges, during your background stage, this is where you can certainly help to um, make them blend in together. And again, just w once you get that brightness on there, just make sure that you blend it in with the neighboring color. And all the tips don't have to be yellow and white. You could make, you know, this one could be on the redder side. So maybe this, 
this little tip has a little bit of red in it. But if you can, you, you're in essence kind of cleaning up the edges and getting any little highlighted spots to pop out if you want to. So I'm still got some, I just put some more yellow and white because this, this little area was just kind of screaming that it wanted to be highlighted. And sometimes the, the painting will tell you what it wants. So you might already have some yellow areas. Use those, utilize those as the areas that are gonna be highlighted and pop out. You don't have to, um, you don't have to change what's our, what you already did on that first layer. You can certainly just enhance it. So if I have a, a area that's already orange, I can certainly add a little bit more orange and maybe yellow on top of it. And then if I wanted there to be a little highlight, I could add a touch of the white near it. Um, so you can just let that first layer kind of dictate to you what, what is gonna happen. But the edges are probably the most important part um, of it. So I've kind of got this side pretty pretty well done except for this little area here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just work on this little corner for a second here um, and then I'll move around to the other side. But again, I'm, I'm working on my edges. I'm adding little highlights with the yellow and white and that's gonna get, it's gonna clean up the edges. It'll get them to look a little bit more three-dimensional. If you want something to pop out even more, I'll do this in this area just so you can see it. If you add a highlight onto an area, it's going to make that part of the leaf look like it's bent or curved. Um, so you could do that in the center. You could do it over here and make this area look like it's bumped out a little bit. So just know that you've got many, many options to the to creating a nice dimensional um, leaf here. But my ultimate goal right now is just to really make sure that I've got nice clean edges. So I want to clean in the sense of painted well at the edges, not clean in the sense of it can't have a bump here and there because leaves would definitely have bumps or, or um, you know, maybe a little insect ate a little piece out of it. Um, so that, you know, that would be a different kind of clean. I'm just looking to make sure that I have fully executed paint all the way to the edges. And if I want there to be um, a nice smooth layer to it, that's that's also what, I, what I'm accomplishing. So again, I am making sure the entire leaf has a second layer. I'm concentrating a lot on my edges to make sure that I've got them fully executed and that all the, all the paint seems to be working well together and it's blending in with the color that's next to it. Um, also, when you look at leafs, they do sometimes have little speckled kind of marks to them. So if yours is not fully transitioned perfectly, it's okay. I mean, you can have, I just picked up some brown just for demonstration purposes. You can have almost like these little speckly marks throughout your leaf. That's going to make it look really natural too, because leaves have brown in them. They have texture to them. So they don't have to be 100% smooth, but you do want to make sure that you have fully painted it. So with acrylic paint, sometimes it is translucent um, and you can see through it and the colors, if you don't put enough paint on there, they, it doesn't look fully executed. So that's why I'm doing a second coat at making sure that my edges are nice and um, complete and even I'm even painting right over that first layer of the veins just to make sure that um, I've got that second coat that surrounds it. And I'm almost done with getting my edges and then I'll, I'm gonna really kind of freeform the center area. But you can see obviously I'm, I'm taking my time on these edges because I, I want them to be fully realized and I want them to be executed the way that my creative brain is telling me to execute them and I'm I'm right now I'm kind of alternating my yellow white orange and red um, just to make sure 
that I still have that variety of color throughout the um, throughout the leaf. You don't want to have every edge super duper white because that wouldn't wouldn't typically happen. So you do want to have some of the edges a little bit darker than others. Um, that will tell the story that you know one part is maybe in the shadow or tipped away from you. Um, so you know just continue to have fun and and modify those edges and make them as realistic or impressionistic as you would like. I am just kind of finishing up, whoops, I was a little bit too much paint on my brush there. I'm just finishing up these little, these little areas in through here. I do want to get um, this top area. I didn't do my, my exterior edges yet, so I'm going to do that right now. And then again, as I get towards that center, I'm going to just really start free-forming it. Um, but again, I'm, I'm being mindful that I'm painting as much as I want these edges. They take a little while, but I tell you, when, you, when it's all said and done, you're going to have a, a beautiful leaf that has a lot of dimension and a lot of uh, information in it. Um, and again, you can switch the colors as you go. You can, if you have one area you're like, oh, I wish that that area was more red or more orange, feel free to, to modify it as much as you want. Um, and because you have the, probably a lot of the yellow as the base coat, you can certainly add colors on top of it. You can't really, if it's red, you can't really turn it yellow without adding white to it, but you can certainly turn yellow into orange or red. And here I go, right now I'm just kind of free-forming this middle area. I think I'm gonna put more red up and through here and you can see how the colors are just see-through they're just they're just popping i can i can see everything that's underneath them and i'm really just adding almost like a hue on top of it and it's really looking vibrant and very autumn-esque this is i love this time of year because you get so the the colors are just so different than they are in the summertime and they're just warm and cozy and rich and just speaks to to my inner artist. These are the colors I like. And I'm just kind of finishing up here. You can see how I'm the center area. I'm really just adding another layer to it, making sure that I've got my whole painting nice and fully done. I think I'm going to add a touch more brown and orange maybe in through here. And then let's see, we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this layer nice and fully realized, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our water drips. So I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna be using white paint. Um, and these don't have to be perfect either. Nothing really has to be perfect in painting, <laughs> but I'm going to strategically place them. One's going to be coming off of this piece of the leaf, and then I'm going to have a couple kind of dripping off of this piece of wood over here. Um, I'm going to, again, just use white paint. Right now, we're just going to kind of outline them, and then we're going to make a couple of marks inside of them. So if you don't want your um, lines to be really thick and... Um, unable to reverse what i would recommend you do is take a your brush a little bit of water and you can thin out your white paint a little bit so this way it's almost like an ink consistency and that way what you're doing is you'll be able to get these nice thin lines and you can always add to it to make it as thick or as white as you want um, but it allows you to be more cautious coming out of the gate and then when you go to load your brush, if you take it and kind of spin it in your paint on the side of your palette, that's going to give you a nice pointy brush. Um, and when you go to, to make the mark on your canvas, don't push hard, and that'll give you a nice skinny line. So here I go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'll do this one first, and I'm really just going to kind of go straight down a, a little bit away from the tip of my leaf, something like this and then I'm going to just kind of make a big ball. It doesn't have to be um, perfect. Um, I want it to look like it's kind of wobbly shaped initially and then at the bottom just kind of meets 
itself, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of an upside down silhouette uh, um, outline of something that kind of looks like a leaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a little curved line in through here. I'm going to get it to blend in a little bit with that bottom edge of the water droplet, something like that and I'm going to come up something like that and then I'm just going to make these little kind of spikes coming off. I don't need this to look exactly like that leaf. I just want to give the viewer the impression that this underneath here might be the reflection of that leaf up there. So I'm just kind of doing it like this and I'm doing white first so that way we're going to let the white dry and then um, we'll be able to pop on those very vibrant colors. So I did that. I'm going to put a little bit of white up at the top of my, um, my water droplet so I can have a real nice highlight at the top. And I think that's all I'm going to do. Maybe pull this up just a little bit more. Something like that on this one. And then I'm going to go do the one up top coming off of here. So this again is going to be kind of free form. I do want my bottom drop to be higher than this one. So I'll have it maybe somewhere around here is where the, um, the bottom one's going to go. So again, I'm going to have something kind of dripping off of here. I'm just going to kind of do the outline first. And this is water so it can have a mind of its own. I'm going to get this to kind of drip like that. And then maybe I have kind of a little bubble part at the top that goes skinnier and it comes into maybe this other little droplet in through here. And again, it doesn't have to be super duper perfect. And then this one, I'm going to have it like it's reflecting the same leaf, but at a different angle. So I'm going to take this one and then I'm just going to kind of make some um, like little pointy edges, something like this on this side. And then I'm just going to color in that little section with white. And I'm also going to put, I think I'm going to widen this a little bit so it's a little more bubbly, something like that. I'm going to put a couple of strategic white marks up in through this one, so maybe one over here, and maybe maybe one on this side too. And then we are going to be using the, we'll use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your water drips on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to do for the next step is I am finishing the veins on my leaf. I'm using my small brush. I'm going to be using mostly brown, but I will also use some red. And if you want to make it a little bit more three-dimensional, you could certainly use some white too or some black. But I'm going to I'm starting with some brown paint and I'm in essence kind of doing another layer um, and just making sure I don't have to do it exactly as thick as I did the first time. This is just adding that extra bit of punch. I'm adding a little bit of a red to my brush right now and the red is going to make it um, really have this cool dimensional element to it. It's almost giving it that three-dimensional look just with that red itself and you don't have to again put it exactly on where you had it the first time. You could certainly go out of the box a little bit and that um, the red is going to help to make it have, you know, that little, that little kick. Um, but again, brown and red, and you can use them at the same time, or you can use them, you know, alternating, whatever works for you is totally fine. And if you wanted up, especially up towards the top, if you felt like you needed to kick, um, this area out a little bit, you can certainly put a little bit of white on your brush. So I might, I might do that on mine in a second here, but I want to just first get these um, red brown veins all nice and 
um, realized here, adding a touch more red up into these ones. And now I'm gonna add a touch of white and brown. I really want this to pop out a lot. You can, you can bring this dimensional highlight into the leaf if you want to, which is exactly what I'm doing there, making sure that I've got this all nice and colored in here. And then we're gonna actually switch brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your veins all nice and three-dimensionalized, you can uh, put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding the reflection into the water. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I am gonna be using uh, all the colors on my palette. Even black, I think. So definitely all the colors in my leaf, which are white, yellow, orange, red, and brown. Colors in my background and my water, which are green, yellow, and black. So I I'm only really gonna use the black if I have to. Um, but to make this believable, we wanna have two kind of pointy areas in the water that are gonna represent these two um, lowest points of our leaf. So I'm gonna have the lightest and brightest areas directly below these. So this one over here is gonna come really close to this water droplet and it's gonna have white and yellow and then this one's gonna be a little bit over here and it'll have white and yellow. And my reflection is gonna start small or narrow in these spots and then it's gonna get really wide and um, my brush stroke is gonna be thicker and um, wider as it comes down towards the bottom of my canvas. And I will be incorporating all of those colors. But I'm gonna start with yellow and white on my brush just so I can kind of get the movement of where I want these. And so I'm gonna start right in through here and I'm, I'm gonna go a lot left to right but I don't want it to just look left to right. So you'll see that I kind of wiggle it along the way. So I'm gonna start with just yellow and white. So something like this is just gonna kind of get this section started. I'm gonna pick up more yellow and white. This one I'm gonna have a little bit lower on my canvas than this one to represent that this is higher in the air. So I come over here directly below and then I'm gonna just drop it just a touch more. So I'm gonna start this one somewhere in here and then I'm gonna do a pretty similar motion to that which is where I'm gonna just kind of go left to right and wiggle it a little bit, wiggle it just a little bit. Um, and then now I'm gonna kind of, I know that it needs to get deeper and darker in through here, between here and here. So I'm gonna keep that kind of dark, but then the rest of it's kind of free form because I know I need yellow, red, orange, brown, green, all these colors down in, in through the bottom. So what I'm gonna do, I still have just yellow and white on my brush. I just picked up yellow without picking up more white. And I'm gonna just kind of get a little bit of that brightness in through here. So just yellow on my brush right now. Getting some bigger pieces of the reflection down here. Now I'm picking up a little bit of orange and you can intermingle it in certain spots. Nobody's gonna um, dick, you know, pick on your painting if you have you know, orange over here and there's not exactly an orange spot. Reflections can have a lot of fun. They can be um, kind of chaotic and not perfect because the water could be a little ripply, which distorts uh, what you're seeing up above. So have fun with it. So I've got some orange over here. I'm gonna pick up some red on my brush, get a bunch of red down at the bottom to represent that maybe. And again, I'm kind of pushing harder with my brush in order to get this on here in a wider sense down at the bottom. I do want maybe something over here to represent a little bit of what's gonna happen there. So maybe just a little smudge of something there. I'm gonna pick up mm, a little bit more red, I think, on my brush and through here. And now I'm gonna pick up some of my green and yellow to represent the colors on the side of my um, 
my leaf and I'm going to get that to intermingle in with the leaf a little bit. And if you feel like your brush is overloaded, just wipe it off on your paper towel. I'm going to do a little bit more green in through here and you can overlap your colors. Don't feel like you have to do just one color in one area. I think I'm going to kind of do something fun like this in through here and just have fun with it. It's, you know, reflections are a great way to just express energy within your painting and give it a lot of movement. So, you know, you can certainly put more white in areas, even if, you know, if there's not a ton of white up top, just to give it that the energy and the movement that you're that you're you've got up top and just you know if i've got a white area here maybe this left side of this reflection is a little bit lighter so just you know if your leaf is all red of course you want to have a all red reflection but have have fun with it energize it oh i'm going to put a little bit of brown on my brush too because there's there's brown up here and then we are going to be using our tiny brush for the next step so once you've got your energetic reflection on here, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our water drops. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna be utilizing the colors that are in the leaf to make this reflection happen inside these um, inside the water droplets and I am going to be also using the background color to put a little bit of a sliver of that color into the water droplet so it looks like it's reflecting that even if I have to go a little bit brighter on um, that sliver of color just so I can carry that color into the water droplet so in essence, I'm gonna have the leaf colors kind of on the left side of the water droplet and the background color on the right side of the water droplet a little bit. And then um, if your water droplet doesn't pop out enough, you can also do a little bit of a black outline around it, depending if, you're, if your background's already really dark, you won't need that. But if your background is a little bit lighter, you might wanna put a little bit of an outline around it. And then we'll pop in a couple of really bright white highlights on it. So I'm gonna start with adding the leaf colors into the designated areas. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of yellow on my brush. And I'm just really kind of streaking in the colors. I, I'm not looking for a mirror image at all. I just want to give that viewer the information that um, this is reflecting what's over here. So I'm streaking in some of that color. Um, now I'm going into a little bit of orange. I didn't wash my brush. I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of orange within this um, white area that we've kind of already designated as that's going to be the leaf part of the reflection. Um, I got a little bit of orange in through there. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange on this one. And again, doesn't have to be one for one. Maybe you can even put a little bit of the orange going up on the right side. I am gonna put that sky color there too, but you can have these colors really reflecting wherever you want within that water drop. That's the beautiful part of a water drop. It um, can take have a little mind of its own and reflect whatever it wants wherever it wants to based on the bend of it or anything like that. So I still just have orange on my brush kind of going over some of those lighter, whiter areas. And I have these little spots that we didn't paint because they're actually showing that background color um, behind it. I'm picking up a little bit of red right now because I know that I have more red over on this left side of my leaf so I'm putting a little bit of red in through here reloading my brush getting some more red on here I'll put a little bit of brown in a minute uh, let's see so red there maybe I'll put a little bit of red up here to represent kind of the top of that leaf I'll put a little bit of red somewhere in through here and then I'm picking up a little bit of brown to get some brown scattered in here. Oops. 
reloading my brush in a more organized fashion. And again, I'm not washing my brush throughout this process. I just want to make sure that I've got the colors I want where I want them. So a little bit, I think I'm going to put maybe a couple of little streaks of brown up the middle of that. That looks good to me. Maybe a little bit of brown in through this one. And you can see I'm really not, you know, going for a photorealistic um, mirror reflection here. I just want to give the illusion that it is in fact reflecting something with similar colors from that left hand side. Now I'm going to pick up, actually I think I'm going to bring a little bit of this red and brown just a little bit higher up in through here. Make sure I've got that the way that I want it. I'm going to add um, a little bit of green yellow, and maybe a touch of white. I want to get something that's a lighter kind of color or a good representation of almost like that brightest color of my background. And then I'm just going to add kind of a little sliver of it over on that right hand side. Again, just so it looks like it's, you know, kind of taking on a little bit of a reflection from that area. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, again, you're just trying to give it the illusion of a reflection. Maybe this one creeps up in between these little pieces of the, of the leaf. Maybe I've got a little sliver of it in through here. And then of course I want to represent something up in through here. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to wash my little brush to make sure that I have um, it pretty clean because I want to do a really bright, like a twinkle spot on my, um, on my water drops. So, or a glare maybe would be the right word for it. So I'm going to pick kind of a bright high spot in through here and then maybe just pull this down the side a little bit and maybe pull it up. And you could add these little, um, bright pops wherever you want. If you feel like you need to highlight the edge a little bit more, you can certainly do that. You make sure you have little bright twinkles um, within the, the reflection too. Maybe even you needed to, you know, if your edge was too dark, you could add a little bit of a, of a, uh, a wet reflective spot. I'm gonna go to this one and add this one somewhere in through here. So just a little, little brightness to make sure that it looks wet enough and you can even do a touch down that side. And you know, you just really want these, to, these areas to look like they belong together. I might do something with that area in through there, but first I'm gonna just finish adding my little twinkle, my little wet spots, something like that. That looks pretty good, maybe. Get this little one to have it up at the top. And you can see I'm pretty systematic with where I'm putting them, kind of top left. Um, and then now it's just about little tweaking. Like I really want, this doesn't look right to me here, so I'm gonna make this blend in a little bit more. And then we have one tiny little step to go. Um, if you did need to, do a little black outline, just grab a little black on your brush. You could use that to clean up your edges. Um, but we're gonna, once you've got your reflections all nice and realized within your water droplets, you can wash and dry this little brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I am gonna be using my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I think I'm gonna actually sign this one in the, hmm, uh, in the bottom left corner. I'm gonna be using black paint and I'm gonna sign mine with my initials. You could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol, 
whatever you want to be your identifying mark is totally up to you. And that is going to conclude this autumn leaf painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your seasonal painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.